Okay, so I really hope you're excited. And we already set the scene with Jason. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I present you Daryl Hutchings, our live opening speaker for our second deep dive today. His wide set of expertise and immense experience with the communication sector, I'm sure will greatly enhance the depth of our conversations today. So Daryl, the floor is yours. Great, thank you very much, Eva, appreciate that. Let me share my screen and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, are there slides coming through clearly? Perfectly. Great. So yeah, my name's uh, Daryl Hutchings. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called Collaboration Squared. Uh, we're a global uh, conferencing provider uh, in the enterprise space and most recently created a product called Video Window. Uh, and what Video Window is, is the world's first uh, always on immersive uh, video conferencing portal. And it's a product that we've designed uh, not to be another video conferencing product or, or to interfere with meeting room technology or desktop technology, but uh, uh, something that we believe is something that creates an extension of physical space. So yeah, with uh, human connection um, is really the kind of focus of what we think about in the business. Uh, and ultimately what we believe is the kind of future of how uh, technology is going to be created. So um, with that, I thought, you know, how can I kind of best express this and, and uh, help people think about, uh, again, how to think of technology. And uh, the, the best way for me, I thought, was uh, the inspiration that I, I've taken myself in terms of learning from kind of film and television and science fiction. Uh, you know, it's always been a really interesting way to, uh, to learn about things. And uh, the, the other great thing about film and TV is that there's no limitation uh, in terms of the technology. It, it's, it, they always think about it in terms of what's the uh, most imagination they have in terms of that scenario and uh, how, the, how can they solve that. So, uh, you know, if you go all the way back, you have the likes of the Jetsons uh, and what they're able to create on, uh, you know, this concept of having a video conference in the home. And this is all the way back in 1962, which is uh, really interesting. We have uh, you know, Space Odyssey from uh, 1968, which again showed this idea of being able to communicate with your family from home. Uh, Back to the Future, a personal favorite movie series of mine and uh, uh, you know, how they can have uh, video conferencing at home for both work and, uh, uh, and personal use. Uh, things like Star Trek, where uh, you can have um, uh, you know, this uh, can communication from uh, the kind of shared area of the bridge. Uh, through to other vessels uh, and also obviously through to other uh, planets in fact and this again very kind of immersive experience. Um, uh, Wally uh, is a fantastic favorite movie of mine and uh, obviously I know we've got Anthony on the call so I thought it'd be worth a good, uh, a good mention there uh, and yeah the way they use communication technology in this context is where the captain is uh, doing a stream to uh, all the devices of every single um, passenger on the crew and every screen and the system. So again, thinking outside the box of different ways to, to use technology. Um, and then as you start to kind of get more immersive uh, into the experience, you look at uh, obviously virtual reality uh, and uh, you know how Ready Player One uses that for uh, primarily a kind of gaming side of things, but also the whole uh, concept around uh, community and connecting with friends and, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then uh, uh, one that you may not have heard of before, but is a movie called The Kingsman. And uh, uh, they have this scene where they have a really interesting use of uh, augmented reality. So uh, as you can see here, you know, everyone wears the same glasses. Uh, and then they have this sense of presence with everyone around the physical table of physical objects plus uh, the, the AR based things. And for me, this is kind of where it gets really important in terms of that, you know, it should be just something as small as glasses and kind of not be a bulky headset. Uh, for me, that's kind of when uh, it will shift from being a, a consumer kind of gaming type scenario to you know, actually having real uh, business use uh, for, for this kind of technology. Um, of course, we've got Star Wars with the ability to have uh, holographic projections in this kind of asynchronous fashion. Uh, and then uh, more recently, the idea of having uh, holographic projections uh, beamed into a physical space uh, without the need to be wearing any technology yourself. Uh, so yeah, if we can kind of get to a, a future state of this, uh, for me, this is uh, you know, something I believe is very exciting and very interesting. Um, and then finally, uh, you have uh, the, the Matrix, which is a great film from 1999. And 
uh, you know, you have the, the, this kind of completely immersive experience based on uh, being connected uh, directly, uh, you know, from, from the, your neuros uh, and, and uh, tricking the brain uh, into thinking that you're in a space and with people that you're not with. Uh, you know, again, this is the, uh, the, the true level of immersion that you could think about. And uh, hopefully the machines won't have taken over, but hopefully you will get this, uh, uh, this experience at, uh, at some point in the future. Um, and so on that note, the, the future of work, um, uh, you know, one of the things that inspired us, uh, again, when we were creating the video window was uh, this uh, internal project that Google did. And uh, the, their goal was to try and understand what is it that makes the perfect team. Uh, and they researched over 180 internal teams over a 12 month period. Uh, and their initial impression was that they were expecting that the teams that had the uh, most qualified people would be the teams that uh, uh, performed the best, but that's not actually the case. What happened was, is it was the teams who kind of collaborated and worked together most and uh, created and influenced these, uh, what, what are called group norms, um, which allowed them to perform the best as a team unit. Uh, and for me, in, in terms of what we're doing, we think about that in the, the, the sense of the familiarity you have with the, the people that you work with on a, on a specific project. So. Um, with that on, on video window, I thought again, I'd just show you uh, some of the kind of ideas and way of thinking that we've designed this. Uh, uh, so again, it kind of think, makes you think about, well, what other unique experiences out there that people can build. Um, and so, for example, you know, we've done lots of work on video window about uh, how we can kind of maintain these always on connections and how we do the scheduling. Um, but even more nuanced things like uh, even though the video is on for the duration of the day, uh, we have the audio off um, until we click the join audio button. So, uh, you know, it doesn't disturb you when you're near the device and things like that. Um, how we separate and show, uh, you know, remote users as circles and uh, physical spaces as squares. Uh, so this is kind of a delineation and, and things like that. Um, and fun features like uh, we have this ability to tap on the screen and it knocks through to the far side. So. Uh, you know, it's a, a very kind of interesting uh, way and use case. Um, thinking about other form factors as well. So, uh, for example, we have a portrait mode and we're the first in the world to deliver a portrait mode experience. And again, it makes it kind of very personal, makes it very immersive, uh, which uh, we believe is uh, an interesting form for the future. Um, and then uh, again, this is something, uh, a bit of a sneak peek for something we're planning next year and uh, the ability to have a, a wall size display uh, and how you can again feel immersed with a space and you know whilst uh, you know we're in this situation of COVID and uh, how, how people are not going to be traveling in person internationally for quite some time you know the fact that people can make these offices feel like they're connected as physical space uh, you know we believe is is really interesting and exciting. Um, another you know talking of remote presence is one of the topics uh, you know we've uh, developed this remote user version of video window and uh, again we had to think very deeply and carefully about how do you uh, how do you do this without it just being another video conferencing tool and you know, again what's the kind of value here and uh, again the way we saw this as a remote user and again especially with the isolation people have been facing over the six months how do you have this kind of remote presence with the office and feel connected to the people that are there in this hybrid working scenario. So, uh, you know, that's kind of how we focus on this more so than a, a, a standard productivity tool. Uh, but also thinking about the privacy requirements of users and video toggles and all those good things. So, um, and then other use cases that we hadn't even thought about that people are coming to us uh, with, uh, you know, with this whole idea of always on uh, and extended physical space and the idea of having a front desk scenario where uh, you know, you can have the safe working for uh, reception staff um, uh, where they're elsewhere in the building or from home and uh, all those kind of use cases. So uh, it's a very kind of interesting landscape about, uh, you know, how traditional uh, meeting services are going to continue with the likes of, uh, you know, Microsoft and Zoom and Cisco and, Cisco and Google and all those. Um, and obviously the likes of, uh, you know, niche players like, like we are in interesting use cases. I believe more and more there's going to be uh, that, that change. Um, and then, so finally, I just wanted to kind of finish with what, what do I see as the kind of future of software development? And uh, again, if you look at the past, it was always about bits and bytes uh, and uh, HV2, 3 and SIP and very technical, expensive hardware, uh, whereas the future is much more about web development and what's the use case and that kind of thing. So we have, uh, and for me, it's the focus on uh, removing frustration uh, of users, whatever uh, problem you're trying to solve. 
uh, how you can kind of improve teamwork and make people feel uh, more together. And, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, really, it's all about human connection. That's the, the, the core value that I believe any new application in the collaboration and communication space has to, has to think about. But yeah, I hope that was useful for you. And if you'd like to reach out to me, feel free to give me uh, an email at Daryl Hutchings. I'd love to have a conversation about uh, all this kind of topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daryl, uh, for this uh, incredibly informative uh, presentation, challenging all of us for the discussions later. Um, you can see my screen, right? Okay, yep. perfect. I just wanted to add on that um, in the quarantine, I watched all of Star Trek because I never did. And I'm a huge fan of it. And I would just add on to watch um, Star Trek Discovery. So the new series are upcoming like every week and, and they're just amazing. So um, thank you even uh, for, for the rest of the movies you said, I haven't watched all of them. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's time to open the breakout sessions.